Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're going to be doing another installment of our weekly meta breakdown. Uh, for those of you new or just returning, what we do is look at the top performing uh, decks each week um, and for each varied format on Arena. And we are going to be doing this video on standard best of one. Uh, there'll be different videos for different formats. If you like traditional best of three, if you like best of one, if you like explore, historic. Uh, I don't think really anyone plays alchemy anymore. Let me know otherwise. Uh, but just kind of gauging from numbers, like seems like a lot of folks are interested in both explore and standard right now. Um, and we get the data from Untapped GG. It's a companion tool that runs alongside your Arena client, tracks your win rates, uh, deck collections, gives you suggestions of things you can build. Um, free to get started, has like in-game overlays to show you like draw percentages, stuff like that, help you prove that the shuffler is rigged. Um, but uh, it's free to use and get started with. Uh, the link is in the video description down below. So if you click that, just let them know that uh, you came from the channel, helps out the channel. Um, but we will get started. This is standard best of one, May 8th to 15th, Platinum to Mythic rank, and we have 240,000 games sample size that we're looking at for the week. And we've actually got some a little bit of a shakeup. The last few weeks it's just been mono white, mono white. Oh, look at us. We're playing Naya humans, mono white with green and red. Um, but now we have Naya ruins the top deck with a pretty commanding win rate of 70.7% after 150 matches. Um, and this is really just kind of the old school Ma uh, Naya runes, the combination of Generous Visitor, whenever you cast an enchantment, gets your things bigger. Uh, Kami grows really large and can come back from the graveyard. Uh, and then you have the combination Jukai Naturalist and Runeforge Champion, which has uh, layers to it that allow you to basically cast any rune in your deck for zero mana. So then you just kind of storm off. You combine that with like Generous Visitor or uh, Chapters 2 and 3 of Showdown of the Scalds. You can make really big, hasty life linkers with Trample out of nowhere. Commune helps pull together the draw of the deck. Some Valor Stance has protection or removal. Circle Confinement has removal. And Touch of the Spirit Realm can be played on offense or defense uh, to get rid of an attacker or blocker or also to just kind of phase out your creature for a turn. Um, so that's Naya Runes. And then we actually have a new deck this week, which is pretty exciting. Uh, it's a Boros Burn deck. Um, burn again loosely in this. It's a Boros mid-range deck. Um, so you still have your white creatures, Hopeful Initiate, Luminarch Aspirant, Brutal Cathar, but then you also have Sunrise Cavalier, card I don't think we've ever seen here in the weekly meta breakdown realm. Uh, three mana, three three, Trample Haste. If it's day or night, uh, it becomes day when Cavalier enters the battlefield. And then whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you put a one on counter on target creature you control. Uh, pretty decent body to kind of just pair up with like Luminar counters. Uh, you also have Thundering Raiju that can put counters on things and deal some damage. You have the Bloodthirsty Adversary that can kick back either your Royal Eruptions or your Play With Fires to go face. Kumano also puts counters on things. And you got some Valor Stance. Um, you got some Dens in here as well for creature lands. Um, I would probably just fix the mana base as well. You can play like an Ajanjo. You can probably play um, the uh, Cave of the Frost Dragon as well. I would play uh, the Red Channel Lion uh, Sokuzan as well. Um, they're pretty much free to play in these decks, so I would probably go with something like that. Um, then we have Naya Humans, basically mono white uh, splash for Halana and Alana and Sigarda. Uh, Champion of Light. This deck's consistently put up good results in best of one. Um, you know what? I'm being silly. I was supposed to go this way. Sorry about that. So you get the full screen size. Um, now we're at Night Humans. Sorry. So you have like Halana and Alana, Sigarda, Champion of Light, uh, and kind of go from there. Uh, moving on, we have Mono White Aggro at a 62.5% win rate. Um, in this version here, really with Mono White, what we kind of look at each week to week is their composition of three drops. So no Elite Spellbinders, full of eight Exile effects in the three drop slot, a uh, full four of Rodain as well, which is interesting. So you're playing quite a few Legendaries, four ofs, four ofs, three ofs, uh, kind of playing into it. Uh, no Wandering Emperor, you still have the Legion Angel package. This version is playing Emiria's Call. So it's kind of in a weird spot of looking to go to the late game apparently, but also trying to kill early. Um, this is probably the most weird composition I would say is probably the best way. 
Uh, but a little bit odd just in terms of stacking on some of these choices. We've seen Wandering Emperor, we've seen Elite Spellbinder in here. Um, so a couple different cards in these slots. Um, and then just kind of to mention, I'll post all the deck lists in the video description so you can always pull those from there. Uh, Mono Blue Delver. Um, so this is kind of a tempo style deck, 61% win rate. And kind of a cool thing with Untapped, like I mentioned. So say I want to build this deck, I am missing two of the four Dream Shackle Geist and two of the four Smarch of Swirlingness. I have 21 rare wild cards, so you could sync your collection, so you can see what you can and can't build. Uh, but this is kind of just a tempo style deck. You want to protect the queen style, so you have like Essence, Ascendant Spirit, Delver early. Uh, you can protect with like phasing out offense, defense, fading hope to protect it, um, spectral adversary. So you're kind of like phasing, countering things, and then kind of tapping down your opponent's board to try to get into a lethal position. Uh, we have our first installment of Angels, Angels, Angles, 60%, uh, and this is a Esper version. Uh, the blue, you're playing some copies of Negate, uh, Limvala. So really the blue is to protect your board from board wipes. Um, card that I'm really happy to see getting incorporated in these decks, Elspeth Resplendent. Um, this card's amazing. I love it. Um, just kind of fetching any of your three drops or two drops permanents, like Giada over, like if you don't kill Giada early, it just, every angel just comes in and just is, is a real chonker. Um, I've been mild on the Inspiring Overseer, it's fine, just because it doesn't give you that much life, but it does cycle itself, Righteous Valkyrie, same idea as Giada, it's a must kill at the time, and then Lieza kind of recycles your threats. Uh, you got some removal in there, the Furja's Retribution creates a body and then acts as removal on the win con. Um, and then they're playing kind of a collection of lands, so they have the Blight uh, Pathway, they're playing the Sanctum. I don't love the Snarls, to be honest. They play kind of bad with only four basics, but a Secluded Courtyard as well helps with the mana fixing uh, in the deck. Notably, there are no creature lands in this deck, which seems kind of loose. Um, you are playing the Mirius Call, but I usually like some creature lands in my decks. Uh, we got Orzhov Control, 59, 60% win rate, and this is kind of just an ode to the old Blood on the Snow list. Uh, you got your Meat Hooks, your Bloods, kind of the token -y style version. Uh, no Learn Board in this one, um, kind of playing more of a mid-range. You got Farm Hands to help uh, pull up your mana. Uh, again, it's pretty free, I would think, to play a 4 of. You want to hit your colors, because you are trying to do like double block a lot of times with the White Splash. Uh, but Lulz, Kaya, Sorens, interesting to see the Edgars come back. We've seen a lot of them move away for Wandering Emperor. still think overall Wandering Emperor is probably a better fit. Um, there's just a lot of ways to exile in the format now, so Edgar's not as sticky as it once was. Uh, it does play around Vanishing Verse, which is nice though. Uh, and then we have Mono Green Stompy. Uh, there's kind of two variations, very similar with basically a 0.1% uh, win rate difference. Um, and this is kind of nothing really new and exciting. You're still playing the Snow Lions for both Blizzard's Brawl and Sculptor. And really with this, you're trying to go up to uh, invoke the Ancients to copy with Esca's Chariot. No Ren in this one, no Vivian. Um, just kind of stompy. You got a couple protection spells, some Ranger's Class for card advantage scattered in there as well. And then we got Jun Minute Range. Uh, this is at 58% win rate. Um, so this is kind of just a Rakdos Splash Chariot and Unleash the Inferno. Uh, you can copy the non-legendary copies of an Obnixilis with the Eskus Chariot. So you can get three, four, five, six, as many before your opponent concedes of Obnixilis. Obnixi uh, be the plural. Uh, and then just a lot of cheap removal. Thirst, uh, Strangle early, some Grasps. Shatter Skull, Meat Hook mixed in there. You got Fable to kind of copy your stuff and Vault for the top end card advantage. Um, and then just a variety of lands in there. And then lastly, you have Esper Midrange, Esper Planeswalkers. Um, so very similar idea. So you have your early threats, Luminarch and Tenacious Underdog. Uh, Rafine really kind of pulls this deck together. You have a lot of duplicate legendaries. Um, you can throw them away to connive, get your things bigger. Uh, Tenacious Underdog could come back from the graveyard. Uh, you got Wandering Emperor, Sorens, Lulths, just a bunch of like value. If you just like activating Planeswalker's ability, big braining, 
I uh, definitely like to check out. Um, I tried just a, uh, it's pretty much mono white with Rafine, not as planeswalker heavy, more creature heavy. And I found it a little lackluster. I think just having the ability of like Kaido to refill your hand, because this kind of gets to the point if you don't have a way to refill your hand, um, you're not actually gaining advantage, you're just churning through your deck. Um, but stuff like Wedding Announcement's really good, it gives you another angle, gives you some card advantage potentially. Uh, and then you just have powerful individual threats to mix up with the board. In any case, it's going to wrap this up. Let me know what you're playing in Standard right, Best of One right now, what you've been enjoying. Um, if I've missed any decks you think should be up here, uh, and we will catch you next time. Uh, we are coming close to 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, so if you were about 40 short this morning. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'll greatly appreciate it if you can. And uh, I'm going to try something else out on the channel. I'm going to do like a deep dive deck focus. Uh, try to speak to the deck a little bit more, kind of hands you want to keep, um, if it's best of three, how to sideboard, and just kind of go from that angle there. Um, I'm going to probably start off with a deck I know I've played a lot of, probably like Naya Runes, and then kind of build it out from there. But let me know if you have an interest in something like that, if it's something you'd watch akin to this, or you like these more just consumable quick bite content. And uh, just trying to see how we branch out the content on the channel going forward, give you a little bit more... Um, you know, instead of 30, 60 second blurbs, give you like a 10, 15 minute kind of bio on a deck. In any case, thank you for watching. Have a great one and stay safe out there.